<laughs> oh shit. Man, I'm so fucking excited. Oh my god. I don't know what it is about this particular expansion. I guess it's the expansion and all other expansions, but I am fucking vibrating with like excitement right now. Okay. Let's go in. Oh, great. Okay. Well, it's probably gonna be pretty rough. Jesus Christ. Okay. I think um, I'm gonna get some lunch. But I'll come back. The next ship to sail. Alphano is feeling the need to take stock. Gaddis, do you have some time to talk? Sure. I would like to gather everyone in Dawn's respite and uh, together assess the situation in which we find ourselves. Okay. Let us take stock of the facts, shall we? The crisis at hand began with the sudden appearance of ominous towers in a multitude of locations throughout the world. We have since learned that said structures were brought into being by an organization known as the Telophoroi. The Telophoroi's stated purpose is to recreate the final days of Aeon's past, Aeon's past, an apocalyptic event that would result in the destruction of all we hold dear. Already have these towers of theirs been the cause of untold suffering. Countless innocents kidnapped and imprisoned, their faith perverted for primal summonings. And unless we can find a way to deal with the corruptive aura surrounding the spires, we can't even get close enough to rescue anyone. Those shielded with the blessing of light seem able to resist being tempered at least. But after what happened to Arnbald and Fordola, we need to be very, very careful about how we proceed. Yet while these threats close to home are of Perma concern, we mustn't lose sight of the situation in Garlemald. As you know, the Telophoroi are under the leadership of Fan Daniel and one other delightful fellow, Zenos Ye Galvis, the Crown Prince and our dear friend. To date, he's reclaimed his old body, murdered Emperor Varus, and plunged Garlemald into an even deeper pit of chaos. The capital's probably seen the worst of it. For a good while there, it saw the bloodiest fighting in a war of succession, but that has since changed, and in troubling ways. Aye, during our reconnaissance, the air was not once rent by the barking of cannons of the, or the cries of discord. "'Twas an eerie fog of silence which did blanket that ruined city. "'The inhabitants appeared to have been tempered, "'and with nary a word spoken did they labor to transform the palace "'into a soaring edifice born of nightmares. "'If they were indeed made thralls, "'it seemed safe to assume that these events too "'were orchestrated by the Telophoroi. "'An army of primals is awful enough, but in light of recent developments, I fear it is only the prelude to an even greater catastrophe. We need to devise a means to counter this threat, and quickly, before our allies are overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. We will find a way into Charlian, I'm sure of it. Master Fortunald's comments regarding the final days were curious to say the least. The form knows more than is letting on. Sorry to interrupt. We've just received word from Mistress Kryle. She says that arrangements for your visit have been finalized. You're to head to Limsa Liminza and board the next ship bound for Charlie and blast fast. And on arrival, present yourselves as associates of the students of Baldessian come to assist with the Order's restoration. The arrangements may be settled, but what of your thoughts? They must race at the prospect of returning home after so long. I am eager to see it, of course. 
Of course. Ahem. We should set off at once. All right, let's do this thing. Then I'll accompany you to the docks. You'll need at least one person there to wave and cry and wish you off a safe journey. I'm sure there'll be a lot of crying. Whoa, this... That, that fanfare... Take a little getting used to, I think. Oh, there's a lot of people here. Um... There you are, Tataro. Everyone's here, which is good, because I've already paid for your passage, and the fee is non-refundable. The ship for Charlian should be pulling into port soon, so please follow me and have all your luggage close at hand. We've almost finished loading our cargo. We should be ready to depart right on schedule, or so I'm told. Is this the old 1.0 Limsa music? I think it is. Excellent. Tis nice to have a smooth beginning to one's journey, at the very least. It's funny. Master Louis Soir came here on a ship very much like this one. And now, years later, the street urchin he befriended that day is bound for his mentor's homeland. With his mentor's grandchildren, no less. Aye. Tis upon reflection that every twist of time's river and fate's whims are brought into sharp relief. Thou hast matured much in the intervening years. Wert thou not caught attempting to relieve Master Louisois of his purse scant moments after he made landfall upon this dock? <laughs> oh, really? Now oh, that's a tale I'd like to hear. Will this be your first visit to Charlian, Sir Estinium? Sir Estinian? Hmm. Maybe he doesn't like being called Sir. <laughs> <sighs> Are we strangers newly met? Why this stiff formality? I, uh, merely meant it as a professional courtesy, since we are now colleagues in an official sense. I'd rather you dispense with the Sirs, especially in private company or I'll be forced to respond in kind, little Lord Alphano. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think he's gonna want that. You've made your point, Estinian. Painfully well. <laughs> Better. Are you all right, Tataru? You seem positively distraught. Distraught? Me? Don't be silly. I think it's lovely that they get to see their homeland. It's just... We're trying to thwart the schemes of an army hell-spent on destroying the world. And, once again, I have to stay behind and worry that this is the last time I'll get to see my friends. Don't. No, no, no. Don't use, I'm worrying that enough for everybody. You don't you don't need to also worry about that, please. Okay. Bring them back safe and sound, I promise. No sense worrying about the things we're powerless to change. No, I'm I'm bringing them back safe. If I can fucking help it, they're all coming back. Mhm. Mm I'll hold you to that. Ah, good. You're still here. Oh, Hori Boulder. What? What has Hori Boulder actually done this whole time? I've, 
other than just say hi and uh, whatever. It's fine. Hori! Kultine! What brings you all this way? We're to assist the Maelstrom and the Cobbles with a Lunar Primal operation. So we thought we'd see you off before heading to the tower. Flamine and the others wish you all a safe journey and promise that they'll look after things here until you return. We will too, of course. Aye, we, your fellow Scions of the Seventh Dawn, will do our part to ensure the end of the world won't happen on our watch. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, B Team, I guess. We set the sail. All aboard for Charlian. It's time. Then we must delay no longer. We will contact you the moment we learn aught of value. Wish us luck. Have a safe journey, and please, please, be careful. And so you venture forth unto the unknown. A fate beyond the horizon that cannot be divined. The future undefined and in flux. Why is he the narrator? In uncertain times, naught but the simplest words of wisdom will suffice. That which lives is destined to die. Love leads to loss. Every beginning has an end. Uh. Treasure every moment, every step of your descent. There, in the depths where souls and stars rest, find your truth. That's not ominous at all. <laughs> Ooh. New location. So what's first? Obviously Charlian, right? Okay. Here we go. Oh my god. What the fuck? It's the fucking... It's the 1.0 Limsa intro. Oh, you gonna do this yeah. to me. Holy shit. Feel. Thing. Oh my god, I'm freaking out. <laughs> Are we going to fight Leviathan up top now, too? The day has barely dawned, my fellow earlier riser. Though we're hardly alone in that. Envious of those still sleeping soundly, no doubt. Am I going to mention this? Called out to you, you say? Hmm. Mm. I've heard nothing myself. In any case, I dare say the sea air will do you good. Why not join the others on deck? Charlian should be coming into view at any moment. I mean, this probably wouldn't hit people as hard if they played 1.0, but did like the non-Limsa intros, but I did do the Limsa intro, so <laughs> it's definitely affecting me more. Am 
I gonna see the explosion, the, the star shower? Because that's kind of what happened after this before. Oh. yet reaches you. I am glad. Hear. Feel. Think. And thus do we meet face to face at last. My warrior of light, guided by the crystal. Wait, not Vinat? You're just straight up Highland? Well, why now, Hydlin? I can trust your words lo no longer. I mean, if I'm going to be rough, I can't trust you, really. You are a primal. You have visited the first. You have every right to say that. You have gained an understanding of what I truly am. What Eidolon has always been. A primal. Zodiac was created to forestall the apocalypse which threatened the ancient world. And I was brought forth to bind him. Yet seven times now, those who would orchestrate a return to that bygone era have rejoined a shard to the god I had sundered. The greater his strength grows, the swifter does mine own diminish. The power to draw your mind into the rift betwixt is no longer mine to wield. Yet though it taxes me sorely, I dare not leave these words unsaid. Even bereft of my guidance, you and your companions have accepted the burden of this star's troubled past. A conjunction has begun to form, an intertwining of your time and mine. Alright, like, is the time left? Or is this a time travel thing again? Wheels shudder and turn. Conflict looms. Monumental, which will decide the fate of this world and all life upon it. When you truly understand what is at stake, and your journey has prepared you to surmount the insurmountable, then shall I honor the promise made in another time, another age. Cast your peepers to the fore, folks. Charlians, just over yonder. I will not keep you further. Your traveler's heart must yearn to behold this unfamiliar land. We shall meet again, and soon. Yeah, I don't think we're done talking just yet. Got a lot of questions. Mm. Oh, what a fine morning. Oh, oh still a bit stiff, though. And a good morning to you, too. Taken a look at the island already? Then let's go! Let's go! Might still be room in the prow if we're lucky.
Ah, the sleepers have arisen. <sighs> there she is. <laughs> Good old Charlian. Oh, I see it. Maybe not in father's eyes, but we'll manage on our own, if we must. You do know you're not alone in this, don't you? Oh. Indeed. Tis as Sir Estinian said. Forget not the comrades who boarded this ship at your side. I pray thee. Thank you, my friends. We are ever grateful for your steadfast support. Upon arrival, we will be disembarking into the heart of Charlian proper. There is no greater concentration of wisdom in all the world. I am confident that somewhere within that center of knowledge and learning, we will find the answers we seek. Okay. It couldn't be that easy, but okay. <laughs> We're in it now. Charlian, the solitary island nation of the Northern Seas. Where under the watchful gaze of Thaliac, patron deity of scholars, academics hoard all manner of knowledge and secrets. Once, they deigned to accept foreign students into a distant colony maintained in the Dravanian hinterlands. How swiftly they abandoned it once the first Garlean boot set hostile foot on Alamegan soil. So averse to the prosecution of war, these men of wisdom, your would-be allies. Yeah. Gotta give him some backbone, some spine. Gonna have to fight back. I thought they'd never let us off the ship. What's next then? Entry applications? Hopefully they find no cause to deny us. Hasn't Charlie in orbit severed relations with foreign powers? Those of us without direct ties, myself included, may be refused outright. <laughs> yeah, kicked off right back on the boat. <laughs> Tis true that, as a nation, Charlian only forms trade agreements with a select few neutral countries. I like this music, though. But from a practical standpoint, an island cannot afford to be overly strict with its borders. Especially not if that island's people are wholly devoted to the accumulation of knowledge. If one submits the proper paperwork, with satisfactory evidence of identity and intent, then foreigners may be granted entry. May. Quite. So let us be absolutely clear on these points before we proceed. The immigration officer will ask for your affiliation and your purpose of visit. Considering Charlian's views on intervention, I strongly suggest we avoid any mention of the Scions. Kral has laid the groundwork for us to act as associates of the students of Baldessian, and our ostensible reason for being here is to aid in their order's restoration. Ah, so it's a cover. Okay. 
I get it. Grahatia, it might expedite our progress should an actual student be seen at the head of our little group. Would you mind leading the way? Of course. The immigration officers were this way, as I recall. Shall we? Am I going to get a tour? Give me a tour. Greetings. We've just arrived and are eager to make our way into the city. Would you be so kind as to process our entry applications? Certainly. I see by your mark you are an Archon. I am. Grahat here of the students of Baldassian at your service. I was assigned to an Aeorsian survey team, but have returned to assist with the reformation of my order. My associates here will provide additional support. Uh oh. Not so smooth? Very good. Okay. I have paperwork detailing your group and its scheduled arrival for today. And it seems some few of your companions are also Archons. If you'll step forward, we can process those applications first. Ishtola rule. See how it glows. That list is etherically linked with the citizen registry kept in the main repository. I've confirmed your status as Archons and amended your travel records accordingly. Welcome home. What? So it's like like a computer, but a book with magic? Okay, that's, that's interesting. Now, who do we have here? No, nope, they're not uh, level years anymore. Alphano Leveilleur. Mm -hmm. And Alizé Leveilleur. Your applications have also been approved. Having said that, the streets are abuzz with talk of how House Leveilleur's lord disowned his young progeny. And while such personal circumstances constitute no reason to deny you entry, I urge you to avoid exacerbating your present situation. Times are quite troubled enough already. We shall keep that in mind. <laughs> oh boy. These last two are not Charlian natives, but you will find their credentials are in order. An application was made in advance. Bitch, I'm the fucking warrior of light. I should be able to go wherever the fuck I need to go. <laughs> Come on. To kiss ass to this little Taru Taru. I mean, Lalafell. Hmm. Name and occupation? Oh, I'm gonna smack you so hard. Yeah, let's be let's be pointed here. I'm a fucking champion. Get it right. And it is a title well earned, I can assure you. An adventurer by trade is what your documentation oh, indicates. Oh, fuck. <sighs> no mention of this particular title. Self-appointed, I take it. Either way, your employer seems willing to vouch for your character, so I shall, albeit reluctantly, grant you entry. Champion. Bitch, just write the fucking thing in the computer book. And you, sir? Oh boy, here we go. Estinian Valino, formerly of the Order of the Knights Dragoon in Ishgard. I never actually realized that was his last name. Come to think of it, I never really thought about his last name before. It's kind of interesting. Formally, at least. 
And what, pray tell, is your profession now? Um... Oh god! <laughs> he doesn't know! Think fast, please. Come on. Just make something up. Something good. Please. If you'll allow me... My associate is a mercenary, hired for his strength at arms. Surely you are aware of the dangers we often face on our forays into the wilderness. Mistress Baldessian, if you insist on sponsoring his entry, then so be it. But while I appreciate that desperate times call for desperate measures, I find your choice of company concerning. Be advised that even a single misstep may have severe repercussions for oh your organization. God, this... Ugh. I have every confidence in my chosen company, dear and trusted comrades that they are. But I thank you for your concern. Let us in, goddammit. <laughs> Croyal, it is good to see you. Likewise, long voyage notwithstanding, you will seem none the worse for wear. There is much to discuss, but this is hardly the place. Let's be on our way, shall we? Yes, please. Let's get away from this lady. Before she thinks we blinked the wrong way or something and then kicks us out. Oh! <laughs> Welcome, friends, to Charlian. As your mercenary, I should hope my welcome includes a generous salary. Well, I had to say something, Sir Taciturn. Nope, there's Kryle. I'm glad I spotted your ship coming into port. The officers are born bureaucrats and sticklers for detail. In any case, you may relax and take a moment to get your land legs back. That I will. Oh. And a weapon too. I had thought to launch directly into an explanation of what I've learned and how we might proceed. But this is Gaddis and Estinian's first time in Charlian, and for the rest of you, a homecoming that was long overdue. You must have places you wish to visit and people you're dying to see. Therefore, I propose we postpone our agenda so that you might all have sufficient time to recover from your journey and get your bearings in the city. Once you've settled in, we can reconvene at the Baldessian Annex. How does that sound? Tis a fine suggestion. We may not be welcome in the Levier estate as such, but I should like to nose around the neighborhood all the same. I'm equally untethered, as it were. There's no particular place my kin call home. Still, I would not pass up the opportunity to reacquaint myself with the city. Likewise, a quick tour of old haunts might even yield some useful gossip. The annex was west of the Aetherite Plaza, wasn't it? I shall join you there anon. Yes, we'll see you there. Oh, Siriage not want to go anywhere. I too have places I would be remiss in not visiting forthwith. By thy leave. What of you, Stinian? My services as a guide are yours for the asking. Mm-mm. He doesn't want a guide. 
That won't be necessary. Until we reconvene, I prefer to wander as the wind takes me. But, oh, oh. I think she likes him. <laughs> well, Raha, would you like to join us then? You've been gone for quite a while and this would be the perfect way to refresh those dusty old memories of yours. Yeah, a hundred year old memories? Oh, of course, if you'll have me. Chem goddess, Charlian awaits. After you, my friend, I am more than content to follow your lead. I don't know my way around here. Should you be leading me? Oh, accompanying me. Keep him at your side in order to proceed with quest objectives. Okay. Wait, what? Ah, that's funny. He's like a little minion. And here we are at the last stand. I may have mentioned this before, but although our research into nutrition and food preparation is quite extensive, the average Charlie intends to regard seasoning and flavor with a certain indifference. They don't spice their food? How can I put this? The food is, um, bland. As encapsulated by our infamous Archon Loaf, the prevailing sentiment towards cuisine is dietary value first and taste a distant second. There was one pupil at the studio, however, who could stomach who could stomach the school's insipid meals no longer, so he quit his lessons and poured all his savings into building a proper eatery. And so the last stand came to be. It is, as the name implies, the sole dedicated outpost of fine dining in Charlian, the one and only bastion of the culinary arts in an isle of otherwise mediocre fare. I seem to recall their burger being held as one of the more impressive items on the menu. Not that I ever had the pleasure of eating one myself. Because you were a typical Charlian when it came to cheap and convenient, Raha. But surely Tataru has since taught you how to appreciate a well-prepared dish. We should all stop in when time permits and sample the cafe's delights. Shall we press on? The stairs to the side of the cafe there will take us up to the Aetherite Plaza. So burgers are special to them? Interesting. Jesus, they have quite a large fucking house. Where all the uptight level years live, I guess. Oh. Jesus. Alright. Maybe later. I'm back, and I've brought Gaddis and Raha with me. Ah, you were right about the ship. Hello, Graha. Nice to see you again. And it's a pleasure to finally meet you, Gaddis. I've heard many a tale of your exploits. Ojika? Ojika? Wait, is that the fucking... Uh, Lala from Eureka? Ojika Sunaka, it's been an age. Allow me to introduce Ojika, cousin of, oh, oh, it's the cousin of Ejika Sunjika, an administration officer for the students of Baldessian. He oversees day-to-day -day business of the Annex. I read the reports of the Eureka expedition. I hope Ejika didn't cause you too much trouble. He's impatient and impetuous, but a good sort at heart. This place is like a second home for the students. The Isle of Val served as our main headquarters, of course, but we often had occasion to visit Charlian. Whether to make use of the city's research facilities, attend conferences, or procure supplies from distant shores. And the annex here was built to provide lodgings for our members while we engaged in such activities. Now that our former headquarters is on the wrong side of the world, among other things, the annex has become our new base of operations for all intents and purposes. And yet it feels so empty. With so many lost to us, our organization is a shell of its former self. The day will come when we will see the students rise again. But first, we must ensure that Telofroy fail. 
Through that door on the left is the main hall where we can discuss our options moving forward. Once everyone arrives, that is, you'll probably have time to rest before our discussions begin in earnest. I've had private quarters prepared for you in the Andon, Andron, so please feel free to make yourself at home. Oh, a new inn. Uh, the nap rooms? Perfect for nap. God, these cat people. Okay, maybe I could take a nap, maybe. Oh, I, <laughs> I didn't mean to give you the wrong impression. The chambers are quite well appointed, far more so than some cheap roadside inn, you may be assured. Twas simply that we were often so busy with research or exhausted from journeys abroad that we would slip into the Andron just to steal a few winks. And thus they became known amongst the students as nap rooms, even if many such naps might last well into the following morning. Say the word and I'll be happy to show you to your chamber. Hopefully the others won't be too long in coming. I'll wait for you all in the main hall. Let's check these nap rooms out. Do I not get to check my map, nap room? Let's take a nap. Let's see what this looks like. Clean sheets and warm blankets await. Rest as long as you'd like. Oh, this is nice. No naps just yet. Feeling refreshed and alert? Our colleagues should be wandering in soon, so I suggest we stay here and wait for them to join us. Pray forgive me. I was delayed. It's fine, Orianger. We're all here now. Let's get down to business then, shall we? Come what may, we must prevent the Telophoroi's plans from coming to fruition. At present, I see two paths for gathering the information which may aid us in achieving that goal. The first involves an investigation into the change which has come over Charlian, not to mention the recent inscrutable behavior of the Forum. As most of you know, the 99 members of the Forum are elected from the general populace. This alone guarantees a plethora of opinion with regards to foreign policy. The Bibliotheques, for example, are a group of conservatives which would have Charlian focus on recording history while remaining entirely uninvolved in the making of it. And at the other extreme, we have advocates for proactive diplomacy and direct intervention. My grandfather Galef was one such member, as was Archon Louisois. Yet despite our diverse factions and philosophies, the recent vote to deny Eorzea's request for assistance was unanimous. Even more concerning was the fact that many cited other, more pressing duties as justification for their recalcitrance. Fortuno's refusal in Gridania had those same undertones. It was as if, having stared unblinking into the face of impending doom, he had simply turned away to pursue something more important. But what could that possibly be? A mystery indeed and one which I ask for your help to solve. Our future may depend on it. As for our second potential path, it concerns a request made directly to the students of Baldessian. Our organization was founded primarily to study strange and unexplained phenomena the world over. Mysterious relics and ruins, arcane disturbances, and so forth. Compared to our more isolationist Charlian colleagues, we have strong connections overseas, namely with scholars and academics who share our passion for the unknown. 
The request in question comes from one such acquaintance, Nidana, an alchemist residing in distant Thavnair. Are we already going to travel to the next place? Her missive describes the sudden appearance of a tower and the subsequent summoning of what I can only assume is a lunar primal. In response to this threat, the Satrap of Rads at Han, the individual who governs the city-state, has instructed the alchemists to find a means to deal with the Spire. The artisans of that land are heirs to an ancient tradition, one rather unlike that of their Uldan counterparts. It is possible, nay, probable, that they have gleaned truths unattainable by Eorzea or her Far Eastern allies. They do, in fact, appear to have a strategy in mind, though it will require further research. To that end, they have requested an introduction to a capable warrior shielded by the blessing of light. Assuming we divide our forces to pursue both of Kral's lines of inquiry, then having you join the group heading to Thavnair would seem the obvious choice. But the investigation in Charlian is of vital importance as well. Equal, I think, to the Thavnarian one, given that the fate of the world may hinge on the results of both. Yes, it is quite the quandary. Though it is a great imposition and an altogether too common one, our efforts would be more likely to succeed were you to lead the charge on both fronts. What? So is this like an Alizé Alphino situation? Am I going to pick which place to go first? I guess I'm ready. <laughs> you are indeed our champion. As to which task to tackle first, we will defer to your decision. Let us next decide how everyone else might best be assigned. Hmm. Can I make the teams? As for myself, I shall continue what I've begun in Charlian. I should also like to steal the services of an Archon or two. And thereby gain access to a greater range of reading material. I will help with that. Allow me to offer my assistance. I have some small amount of experience in the field of research. Alice and I would also like to help, if you would have us. Wait, what? So who's going to be on my team if everyone's going to go read books? <laughs> Anything to understand even a fraction of what our father and the Forum might be thinking. I guess it's Dinian and Urianche with me? Of course! The more the merrier. Right. The rest of us will make the journey to Thavnir. Oh, right. Thancred. <laughs> Sorry, Thancred. I forgot my <laughs> get there. Thoughts? Objections? Why would he object? He wants to kill stuff, just like me. I passed through Thavnir on my way to infiltrate the Empire, and though I'm not qualified to give a guided tour, I did gain a sense of where things lie. I'll be happy to have you along then. So for this group, it will be you, me, and Uriange. Give me a moment afterwards, and I'll supply you with all the details of Nadana's request. Consider this hall our rendezvous point once our respective tasks are complete. May our investigations prove fruitful. Let me party with the hot boys. Let's all go to Thavnir. <laughs> Have some fun. It's a perfect four-man group. Let's go. Okay. We got Thancred and company. These guys. I think I want to go with the fun boys. I have Kral's instructions in hand. If you're ready to set out, then so are we. 
Having been to Thavnir before, I can travel by Aetherite, but what if the rest of you? Another sea voyage would waste time we do not have. Krell is of the same mind and has already secured the aid of the good folk of the Confluence. We'll take ourselves there. Oh no. Is he worried about swimming? The Confluence, thou sayest. I am afraid so, my friend. Wait, what? Is this new drama? Please tell me. Thou wilt recall the hunt for Iceheart, unto whose sanctuary we delivered thee, owing to the knowledge of our comrade, Moonbrida. Oh, Moonbrida. Oh. Moonbrida was an authority on aetherology, a field of study she did embark upon in pursuit of her parents' example. Both are authorities in their own right, and both are researchers at the confluence. Oh shit, we're gonna see Moonbrita's parents? Oh, that's awkward for him, but important. Haven't you gone to see them yet? Oh, he's gonna be angsty about it. I attempted to do so earlier, but to my shame, my courage failed me at the last. As it hath, the many times I thought to reach out to them after sending that fateful letter. Neither time nor introspection have revealed unto me the words I should speak, and thus I have kept my silence. Whether you come with us or no is your choice and yours alone. If it is too difficult, we'll manage. Thou art kind to say so, but I have no intention of forsaking our cause. I shall go to the confluence, and I shall face that with ha which hath long been overdue. If it's settled then, let's be off. When we arrive, we should look for a researcher named Kite. Come on, Uriange. I'll help you out. What's up with these guys? So while we go out, these guys are gonna do some research? An unsettling change has come over Charlian, but together we will divine the underlying cause for the forum's callousness. As I mentioned before, however, questioning the counselors directly is a fruitless endeavor. They seem to have already come to a consensus as to what and how little they are willing to divulge. Which is why I began scouring Charlian's archive of historical records for any hint of a connection to the final days. Suffice it to say that progress has been slow. There are only so many dusty pages one can skim in a day, but now I have this band of willing reinforcements, the search should proceed all the swifter. Let's reconvene outside Numenon, shall we? Exit to the annex to the right and you'll find the archi archives on the western edge of the woods. Is this like a big teleporter place? What the fuck? Well now, this is rather a lot of stern faces. Are my library books overdue again? Not to our knowledge. We're associates of Kral of the students of Valdesian. We seek passage to Thavnir and understand that you can assist us. Ah, the test subjects. What? <laughs> welcome, welcome. Test subjects? Oh, you hadn't heard? Well then, allow me to explain. So, in order to travel to an Aetherite, you ordinarily need to be attuned to it beforehand. Otherwise, you can't use it as a beacon to seek out while you're a mess of Aether hurling through the life stream. An inconvenient but incontrovertible incont limitation of Aetherite teleportation. But what if I were to tell you that there's a way to travel to an Aetherite without being attuned to it? I'd say you're crazy. <laughs> a way to teleport instantly to places you've never been. That's fucking awesome. For long years we've labored to make such travels possible, that people might move about more freely. And we've finally done it. We've created a new kind of Aetherite that doesn't require attunement. It does sound vaguely dangerous. Truly, that changes everything. 
Well, my language may have been a bit misleading. The user need not attune to these aetherites, but the aetherites themselves must have been pre-attuned to each other, thereby activating, oh, okay, that makes sense, facilitating travel between the two points. So they're not just two disconnected aetherites. But it just so happens that our first test pair of aetherites, one that has been installed here in Charlian and the other in Gettelmad, a port town in Thavnir. As you may know, our nation has long maintained strong ties with Radzat Han, and indeed, we, are, we must have this breakthrough to the contributions of their alchemists. So to sum up, we're to test these aetherites. How fortuitous for you. I should mention that an accident has impaired my ability to channel ether. Will this be a problem? Not at all. As a matter of fact, you might say these aetherites were made for people like your good self. The, mag the magics imbued within will whisk you away without any effort on your part. A veritable dream come true. And far be it from me to worry about such things, but do we have permission to make use of your shiny new invention? The only permission required is yours, so assuming you're willing, we're all set. It may come as a surprise, but we actually struggle to find test subjects. Most people seem to have an unreasonable fear of their souls gradually disintegrating as they drift helplessly in the live stream. In this statistically unlikely event that something goes awry. Yeah, that's, uh, it's not unreasonable. But it's plain that you aren't most people. <laughs> Mr. Skrile truly knows how to pick them. Yeah, that doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. <laughs> if I might change the subject, are Master Wilson and Mistress Blorida not present today? Oh, you didn't hear? They've recently resigned their posts. Their expertise was needed elsewhere. A large-scale project helmed by the form itself, as I understand, but I'm not privy to the details. I see. Any other questions? No? Then let's get going before you change your minds. Please see to your preparations and head outside to the Aetherite Plaza. I'll be along shortly. Please don't let us get separated or something in the ether, like the live stream. Three. I'm already attuned to the crystal in Thavnir. You are? Oh. I would have preferred more test subjects. Oh, God. Oh, well, never mind. If our three travelers could line up here, please. Deep breath, and I'll soon have you soaring through the ether. Oh god. <laughs> Why am I nervous? <laughs> I feel like this isn't gonna be so easy. Oh, and one last thing. Oh god. You might experience a teensy weensy touch of violent ethereal sickness. Good luck! <laughs> oh, okay. Who's gonna barf when they come to? My bet's uh, on Thank Red. <laughs> Even the indicator teleports? That's great. <laughs> Thavnir, home to city-state Rads at Han. Rising from the southeast waters of the Bounty, this Isle of Plenty served as the battleground for a conflict between two peoples. 
Their cultures bled into one another until a unique amalgamation was distilled from the chaos in a process not unlike their precious alchemy. Once solidified as a single nation, an adamant stance of neutrality would hold invaders at bay for a time. Now across this vibrant isle creeps a fog of malice. What choice do you have? Oh, I got sick. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, he got sick too. Okay. Come on, Rianje. No? What chance? <laughs> oh no! He just passed out. <laughs> oh. CPR? Against such an insidious foe. Starting off very promisingly. <laughs> oh, come on. Why am I... Oh. It's like a headache mixed with barfing. I've seen fairer faces after a bout of bad shellfish. Let me bring you something to drink. That should help settle your bellies. There was a note with Kryle's instructions. Don't let Estinian roam the markets alone. He's alarmingly bad with coin. Couldn't be any worse than Alphano with those fucking katanas and Kugane. That's right, guys. Suck it up. Let's go get him. Manage to will yourself to your feet, but given your condition, will you be able to reach Justinian in time? It might. Is there a timer to barf it? You okay there, Ariange? Oh, not so good. No stopping our champion. Now quickly find Justinian before he hurt. First, let me attune so I don't have to do that travel again. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> okay, I get it. Oh, what? Ether sickness. Okay, then. The hell could he be? There you are. Oh, Christ, come on. <laughs> Shake it off. You there, I need three drinks. Something that helps with ether sickness. By the Mansuya, a traveler. Or, I mean, greetings. Greetings and welcome. You are wise, good sir, to come to me. My special Amra Lassi, made with only the finest and freshest ingredients, is famed for calming unruly bellies. By way of a warm welcome to Thabnir, I'm pleased to offer to you for the low, low price of 19,800 gil if not one, not two, but three bottles, a bargain amongst bargains. I mean, I do have 26 million, so it'd be okay, but that is a little steep. Hmm. The prize is high road robbery, and you want to say as much to Sinian, but you realize any words of warning you cry out would be accompanied by your last meal. Oh, please don't puke all over the dragoon. You must stand before Stinian and, using gestures, deny that the deal is fair. Oh, Christ. Okay, fine. Hmm? I thought you could barely stand. What do you need to tell me that's so urgent? Uh... Wait, I shouldn't buy the lassie. This merchant is swindling me. Ooh, ah. 
It's the sincerest apology, sir, but I appear to have my prices confused. It's actually 1,890 gil for the three bottles of Lassie. Hmm. That confusion would have been quite costly for both of us. Very well, then. Your coin. Here, a bottle for each of you. Take them to the others and get some rest. I'll be back after I've explored the town. Give you one. Praise be to the twelve. My stomach doth loosen its death grip. My heart felt thanks to the Anastinian and to the fine fruits of this land. You were in time? Excellent. You spared us to Taru's wrath. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that before. Sweet, sweet release. If you haven't already, you should have yours too. What is this music? Right, I'm ready to get on with it. That lassie truly worked wonders. Back on your feet, I see. But thy hair. Oh, did he do the ponytail? Yeah. I have bound it. Tis the most I could do against this heat short of shedding my armor. Looks good. May I ask where you got the cord for it? A local vendor. Oh god, did he spend a million in gil for it? The man said it's a Thavnarian weave, tough and not easily unraveled. And how much did it cost? 90,000... What? 9,400 gil? A steal, I was told. Tis nothing fancy, but I've always valued function over form. Estinian, honey, come on. That's incredible, I dare say. Not even Alphano could hold a candle to you. It's not uncommon for merchants to sell their prices high, but doesn't it seem excessive here? All are Hanish merchants, or are, are all Hanish merchants so unscrupulous? I expected the Azure Dragoon to put more, up more of a fight. Hmm. I'm going to poke fun at him. On that subject, I shall refrain from making comment, yet I cannot help but observe that the merchants seem overzealous in their pursuit of profit. Claiming Thavnir as its dominion, the nation of Radzat Han hath long thrived as a hub of commerce. In the beginning, there were the Arcasadora, Arcasadora, a Mataga tribe indigenous to this land. Over time, they became they came to be joined by other races, and through their intermingling, a culture rich and distinct did emerge. From alchemy to textiles, the products of Hanish culture have come to be celebrated and coveted the world over. A development only aided by the nation's prime location as a waypoint between betwixt east and west. All of this hath combined to make a trading power of Razat Han, yet such a status cannot be taken for granted. Nay, it must needs be maintained through judi judicious governance and stringent regulation. Neither of which I see any evidence, given that merchants are at a gateway town are free to fleece hapless travelers and tarnish the reputation of the nation at large. Just so. That opportunistic pricing is rampant doth suggest that oversight is much weakened, or mayhap that the people have fallen upon hard times. Whatever the truth may be, it would be prudent to ascertain the current state of affairs. Prudent and practical, aye. We've not to lose by learning more. So ere we seek out Kral's acquaintance, shall we see what information we can gather here in Yeltelmad? Y y Yeltelmad? Excellent. We didn't get exactly off to a flying start, but we'll make up for it. 